Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Fog Don't Blink. Yeah, that is exact title here. I didn't actually shorten it. Now, it actually took me a bit of a while to understand what the title is hinting for, so I actually, actually had to do a bit of research, and I came across this Doctor Who episode. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of Doctor Who. I haven't actually watched any episodes previously, but there's one in particular about these almost like demonic looking angels, quite an oxymoron of a statement if there is any, where they essentially look all peaceful, kind of covering themselves as statues. And the second you look away or blink, they will essentially try and attack you. So you, the whole idea of the episode is you cannot blink. You have to make sure you keep and maintain eye contact with these angels at all times. Uh, if they do attack you, they steal like time from you so you end up being teleported like 10 years in the future or something ridiculous like that ridiculous i appreciate there are probably doctor who fans that are watching this channel so pardon me as i said i haven't necessarily been uh, watching it oh so that's what you see here being inspired by this particular thumbnail where sleuth is walking around in fog with tons of angel statues that he's making sure well he's clearly not maintaining eye contact with a couple of them and do not blink Hopefully nothing as scary as this when we take a look at today's puzzle and rule set with Fog Dumpling Dumpling by, I'm going to pronounce this as Pegido, and I know I've struggled with pronouncing this handle name before, so this is not a first feature. Um, I'm actually not too sure I remember much about Pegido's previous puzzles though. Now this one, as of the time of recording, has a 95% rating, one star in difficulty, so it should be fairly approachable for all of us. Rules-wise, we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row. Every column, of course, if I can actually highlight one, that's a column. Every 3x3 three three box, so nothing unusual here. Every digit in a circle has to be assigned to one of the surrounding cells. So we have cells in, circles in here that says 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's clearly a bit of a pattern here where all of these cells are made up of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Two cells connected by an orange Dutch whisper line must have a difference of at least four. I can't see any. So if I uh, draw an orange line in here, and uh, essentially cells have to be four or more away. If this cell is a two, this would have to be six, seven, eight, or nine to be four or more away. Just be careful, unlike German whisper lines, if I have something like a nine, I can actually put a five on a Dutch whisper line and then a one. Five with nine and ones, they are clearly neighbors that are four or more away. So you don't necessarily have the polarity flipping all the time. You can go through a middle digit, five, and actually reverse the polarity order. Cells connected by a pink Remban line form a set of consecutive digits in any order without repeats. Uh, again, we don't have one that's visible. So if you imagine that these cells are connected by a purple, is that purple? It says purple as I'm going to get. Remban line. And essentially, I need to create consecutive digits in any order without repeats. That could be one, two, three, four. That could be two, three, four, five. I clearly need four consecutive digits. Cannot repeat them. I couldn't have a double two, for example, even if they were in different columns, rows, and boxes. And I can't skip digits. Two, three, four, six is not a valid remba. Then we have every pair of consecutive digits along a navy parity line. So I'm guessing that's the navy parity line. So if this cell is even, two, four, then the next one along would have to be odd. Then you would flip back to even, then you'd go back to odd. That would be an appropriate fill for the navy lines. We also have green three modular line. So every three consecutive cells along a green three modular line must contain a complete set of residual modulus three. So i.e. one from three, six, nine, so modulus zero, or one, four, seven, so modulus one, and of course, 258, kind of remainder of two. So every cell along these must be essentially kind of one from 369, one from 147, um, one from 258. That obviously doesn't have to be in this order. And then we're back to 369. So that would be a valid pencil mark for the three consecutive cell, the three modular line, the green one. Cells joined by an X sum up to 10. I don't see any visible. If these were an X rather than a V, you know, two cells, that could be one and nine. They have to add up to 10. Um, Vs must sum up to five. So these two cells have to sum up to five. That could be two and three. And 
white dots are consecutive. If this cell is a two, this will be one or three, so that it is consecutive. If there's a black dot, it has to be in a two to one ratio, so that would be one or four. Not all X's or V's are given. A two with a three and a four, clearly a two to one ratio, clearly consecutive. You could keep going. A seven to add up to 10, five, no V's, no white dots, no black dots, no X's. All of that is allowed under today's rules. So, as always, to play along, link in the description down below for you to do so. With that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. And I'm sure you've spotted it already. Uh, let me just repeat the modular line, uh, the three modular line, 5, 8, and 3, 6, 7, 3, 6, 9, excuse me. Now, the only way, so essentially, let's color it, purple, green, green, orange, and then back to purple. So these two cells have to be from the same modular group. They also have to add up to five. That can only be one and four. Two and three are clearly from a different group. So this is one, four, this is two, three. Um, and we have a lot that's going on in here in terms of construction. So a one, four in here tells me that's not one, four. That would be one, four. This would be two, three. Um, this is odds and evens. So even, odd, even. That works. These two have to be even. And I know that for certain because, um, let me just use colors. Let's say blue and orange for different parities. Now, I can't have two cells that are odd that are in a two to one ratio. The fact that you're multiplying by two, you're always creating an even digit, even if you take an odd digit to begin with. So since these two are the same parity, that's two, four, that's one, three. Um, I'm sure you're noticing how excited my dogs are given uh, Mrs. Luth has just come back home. Right, um, how is this gonna work? Two with one, three works, four with two works. Let me just think this through. Yeah, that can't be two, three, because obviously it would break this cell. Right, what else would happen? So two would work with a one, and then a four here and a three there. That would work. Right, so we're not out of the wood yet. Um, the black croquet dot, we know it doesn't contain a three, so the three has to be on this side. The one three pair, that's our first digit. We're clearly dealing with some kind of dynamic fog, so three here, two, three. Um, we said something about this. This is parity. So that has to be the odd. That has to be the even. That three tells me that this is actually a one, two pair. That's my four. The one, three pair in here tells me that's my two. That's my one. Uh, it's clearly not working for some reason. What am I doing next? The three, of course, in box five. What am I two, three, and therefore four, two, and therefore one, three, and then lastly, one and four. And there you go, it is dynamic fog. Maybe that's the reference to the do not blink. Right, uh, so we had to complete all four squares to make some progress here. Let's think about row five. Right, let's do Sudoku for a change. Not one, two, three, four, not one, two, three, four. I'm just highlighting all the cells that are not one, two, three, four. So I'm left with these four cells that have to be from one, two, three, four. One and four in here tells me that this is two, three, and this is one, four. These are essentially five, six, seven, eight, nine. It all looks like it's gonna be on a consecutive Remban of some sort, but you can't necessarily assume that all of these cells are connected. Otherwise that would be four, that would be three. But there has to be another way for us to determine this. Is there another way for us to... Right, of course, one, two. Right, keep keep playing the same card. Three, four, one, two. And therefore, again, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This cell can't be a five or a nine. It has to be from six, seven, eight because of the white crop dots. In fact, no, the Remban doesn't help, helps, doesn't help, not entirely sure. 
Essentially, if I put a five in here, well, four is not available, so I'm not going to have two neighbors. And these are essentially from anything. I'm not sure where this is taking me. So let's think about it differently. These three cells are definitely connected to this REM band. 100% connected to this REM. Right, it's much easier. So much easier. Right, this cell is connected to this cell. It's on a REM band. It's two or three. So like, it can't stop at this cell, given this is at least five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I don't know why it took me so long to see that. This REM band has to be all connected. That's the only way this is going to work. The four here absolutely could work with a five there, but the two, three doesn't. So this has to be connected all the way through until here at a minimum, meaning that it's definitely a three, that it's definitely a two. The fact that it's not... Anyway, the REM band we can also see terminates. So the REM band doesn't continue through the white dots. So that can't be a one. Otherwise, how am I connecting it to all of these digits with the two not available? So that's four, that's one. There you go. Three, four tells me this is six, seven. I feel like that's telling me that this is not six because six would require five and seven and then that would break. Right? That works for me. Seven also doesn't work, does it? Because seven would require six and five and the six would be, t would be gone. So that is definitely eight. This is now seven, nine. This is now six, this is four. These cells are now five, six pair, and these are seven nines, seven nines again. The four in here gave me a three, and this is now a five. And yet it keeps revealing more as you solve like everything that's visible. Um, these are eight nines to add up to 10, eight nines again. Uh, that is definitely a nine because one, two, three, and four are not available. Eight would be require one of these digits, which are not available. So that would definitely be nine, one, five, two, and eight. Of course, given this is a Dutch whisper line. Uh, what have I got in here? So I've got all of these tens. This is a five, nine pair, because in essence, these are the digits that are not usable on the X's. Five is not here. That's the five. That's the nine. This... Let me think. So it's the middle digit of whatever one is low or high. Let me explain what I mean by that. That couldn't possibly be a two because it would need a one and a three consecutive. So that doesn't work. It can be a three with two and four in some order. That works. But um, essentially three works. I'm guessing seven works and then it would have six and eight. Yes. So this would mean this is another three, seven. It is not three, it is seven, therefore that's three, that's not my two, that is my two, that's my four, that's my eight, that's my six, and it reveals the next set. Four tells me this is a two, three pair, in fact, I know the order, two and three. This is still, uh, this is a one, four pair, the four is not here, that's the four, that's the one. And then the consecutive digits will hopefully help me a bit. A bit. Somehow. Uh, can we do some Sudoku quickly? One, two, three, four, five. I need six and seven. Hasn't helped. One, two, three, four, five, seven and nine. This is six and eight. Again, hasn't helped. Eventually it will help. Yes, it has helped. Because there is no six in here. Yes, that's six. Excuse me. Seven, six. And then these two cells are one, two, three, four and seven. Then these three cells are one, three. I mean, the one can, has to be in here. Three, and in fact, the three has to be there as well. And this is what, nine. That gives me seven, that gives me nine. Lovely. Six and eight, four and seven. Seven, four and, yeah, are also resolved, obviously because of here. That white crop dot wasn't useful at all. It's connected to both six and eight. And yes, it is indeed six and eight. Um, what's next? Not too sure. Actually, up here is six and eight again, by the looks of things. Six and eight. 
this would have to be an odd digit. So this is five, seven, or nine to be connected to the even digit here of six, eight. Not much more to go on right now. I mean, so far I haven't really used these white crop kiddos, so I probably should do something about that. How are we doing for time? Have I not? Yeah, I have resolved these. Nope, five, six. And then what, seven, nine pair here? And then five, eight pair here. That seven, nine would require six or eight over here, except it is not eight, it is a six. Meaning that six, that seven, that has to be eight now. That is not seven, that is nine. And that is five, eight, six, nine. Fantastic. She hasn't revealed anything other than the digits I have placed. Then I am back to a seven in here. Oh, that's the entire grid revealed now. Excellent, we're on the right track. Two is only here. Five, seven, seven and five. In fact, this is now useful. So it's either seven, six, five, possible. Seven, eight, nine, possible. Wasn't expecting that. Less useful. One, two, three, four. I need eight and nine. That's the nine. That's the eight. I need a one. I need a five. I still need a five in here. What do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, not useful. Like in the slightest. Okay. What about in here? So I have six, eight, five. Actually, it's five. Come on, sleuth. Nine, eight, six. And therefore, this is my six, then I have set, no, five and eight in some order. In fact, the nine was very useful. Seven, nine, then five and eight, not placed for some reason. Then I have another five, eight and a six. The six can only be in here. This can only be a five because the eight is already placed. And I think we've got it from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I've not made any mistakes, eight for the finish. It is indeed a beautiful puzzle, Pegido, Page Do. Hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video. I mean, I love Dynamic Fog. It just plays so wonderfully different. And I'll see you back soon. Bye-bye for now.